We already talked about arrays and tuples in Julia in previous videos. And today I want to introduce another data structure called dictionaries. And as every video in this series, the notebook is available on the Julia course repository. And it's called por-dictionaries.jl. So what's a dictionary? Well, contrary to tuples or arrays, they are unordered collections. And each element in a dictionary is a key value pair. And to better understand what is a key value pair, let's see how to declare a dictionary. So to declare a dictionary, we can use the dict function. And inside the function, we pass key value pairs as arguments. So a key value pair is declared just like this. You have the key on the left hand side and the value on the right hand side of this statement. And in this example, we use the keys as roots, so bananas, strawberries, and the value to tell how many do we have. So here we have four bananas and 15 strawberries. But the keys can be of any type. So instead of just using strings for for example, we could mix, well, strings with integers and even symbols if we want. And the reasoning is the same for values too. We can use strings and floats and integers in the same dictionary if we want. And this is fine if you don't need performance. But if you really need performance, it's better to have just one type for the keys and one type for the values. Or at least avoid the any type. We can also declare a dictionary with keys and values separately. And then to associate the keys with the values using the zip function inside the dict function. What's interesting about dictionaries also is that we can grow them very easily. So we can start by declaring an empty dictionary and we can even pause the type of the keys and the values as shown here. But this is completely optional and if we remove this our new empty dictionary will have keys and values of type any. But let's get back to forcing the type of the keys and the values. So now let's see how to grow our dictionary by adding new key value pairs. It's very simple to add a new entry to your dictionary. You just have to index your dictionary with your desired key and assign the new value. And to get back this value, you just have to index with your key. And because it is a constrained dictionary, because we forced the type of the keys and the values, we cannot add a new string, for example, as a value because we constrained it to float64. So we just saw how to index into a dictionary using strings as keys. And the process is exactly the same with any other type used for the keys. So for example, if you used integers for your keys, you would use also integers to index inside your dictionary. We can also check whether a key exists inside a dictionary using the ASCII function. And to use it, you pass your dictionary and in the second argument, you put the desired key. And it will return true if the key exists and false if it doesn't. If you're not sure if your key exists, but you want still to return something if it doesn't, exist, you can use the get function. So you pass it as the first argument, your dictionary, and then the key that you want. And as the third argument, you put a default value that would be returned if your key doesn't exist. So here, for example, we index using one and this key exists inside the dictionary. So it returns the value. But if we index with three, which doesn't exist in the dictionary, it will return the default value that we passed. If you want to get all the keys at once or all the values at once from your dictionary, you can use either the keys function to get, well, the keys of your dictionary or the values function to get all the values from your dictionary. We can also filter our dictionary based on the keys or the values inside the dictionary. So here I put an example of filtering our dictionary to keep only the values that are even. And to do so, we use the filter function where the second argument is our dictionary and the first argument is a function. And this function must return true if we want to keep the key value pair or false if we want to remove it from the resulting dictionary. So here I just created an anonymous function that takes the key value pair as input and tests whether the value of the key value pair is even or not. If you don't know what is an anonymous function, don't worry, we will get into that in another video. Okay, now that we know how to filter a dictionary, let's see how to mutate it. So to add elements, we can do as we saw before, just indexing with the new key and adding the new value just like this. But as for arrays, we can also use the push function to add new elements to the dictionary. And here is a little example where we use the push function to add 30 cherries into our dictionary. Well, here I use a begin and end statement because we're inside Pluto and Pluto doesn't like when we mutate elements. So what we do instead is making a copy of our previous dictionary and 
mutate this copy of the dictionary inside the begin and end statement. But if we were not inside the Pluto notebook, but rather in Julia directly, we would directly use the push function on our dictionary dict, like so. We can also merge two dictionaries into a single one by using the merge function and passing our dictionaries as arguments. And we can delete elements from dictionaries using the pop functions as for arrays. And if you use the pop function, you'll see that it returns the value it just deleted. But if you want to use a function that returns the remaining elements in your dictionary, you want to use delete. So this is it for the dictionaries from base Julia. But you can find also different kinds of dictionaries in the Julia ecosystem. So for example, there are ordered dictionaries that you can find from the ordered collection package. And this can be very helpful in some cases, because when you add new elements into an ordered dictionary, it is added at the end of the dictionary, a little bit like for arrays, for example. And last but not least, let's see some functions that I find very useful for dictionaries. And these functions are related to mathematical sets. So we have the union function, the intersect function, and the set div function. And what they do is pretty obvious. The union function returns the union between two dictionaries. The intersect function returns the intersection between two dictionaries. And the set diff function returns the difference between two dictionaries. Well, and that's it for the introduction on dictionaries. And this video is part of a playlist. So if you want, you can follow them in order from that playlist. Thank you for watching and I see you next time.